Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we have a story where OP's girlfriend wanted a break after 8 years together. Here's the full story with an update. Until 2 weeks ago, my girlfriend and I had what I considered a strong relationship. We were first love high school sweethearts that made it through essentially 6 years of long distance. Hell, we went a whole year in college being on opposite sides of the world. We've had our precarious relationship moments, but we also have a huge number of happy memories together. Two contented years after we finally moved to the same city again, she starts giving me signs of dissatisfaction. Unfortunately, I'm too clueless to pick up on her covert cues, and one day while we're relaxing in each other's arms, she says out of the blue that she loves me so much, but doesn't see how I can fit into her future. She says that she's afraid that if we get married, she'll get too angry at me one day and have to leave me. She says there's no one else but she thinks that maybe we should just be really, really good friends. I'm so stunned and distressed that I have no mind for arguing, and I agree to her request for us to take a three-week break from each other. Several of the worst hours of my life later, I buckle and ring her phone twice. She picks up the second time, not saying a word. I tell her I'm panicking. She tells me to take that energy and put it to something productive. Okay, I managed to emit, by acting on the advice of a good friend and a remarkably concordant interweb, I haven't contacted her since. It took only a horrible day or two to realize I'd become a terrible boyfriend, having taken her completely for granted. Yes, she made mistakes too, like plotting about how she'd break with me instead of communicating with me directly but I think my transgressions were worse. After two weeks of tortuously unceasing thought and research about the matter, I have taken active steps to become a better man. I started exercising nearly every day. I cut out the video games and distracting videos almost reflexively. I made time to see friends. I began examining whether I was making the most of my career. Most importantly, I am increasingly confident and ready to identify and act on my desires rather than wait for good things to happen to me. It is hard, of course, to claim success when it's only been two weeks and when I'm probably still subconsciously motivated to get her back. I blocked her on FB, signed her off my Netflix, and hid everything physical from sight that reminded me of her. But even so she's on my mind so much, the fact that we are simply on a break prevents me from moving on completely. Still, now that I consider myself an increasingly functional adult and not a passive emotional parasite, I feel I'm ready to resume the relationship if she is. She's an incredible woman, and I believe that we can have an incredible relationship now if she's willing to give it the chance. My gut tells me to take action to demonstrate that I'm not the wait around type I used to be, but I don't want to give her the impression that I'm reliant on her the way I used to be, by making some sort of unilateral romantic gesture. To satisfy both of these urges, I plan to wait until time's up for any contact but have us meet on my terms, not hers, and to demonstrate the changes I've made in my life through my manner, and not with an upfront speech, unless she asks me about my thoughts directly. In terms of getting back together, well, since she did the cutting, I think she needs to do the sewing, if it's to be done. And I'm only going to let her back into my life if she's willing to accept that she needs to communicate more effectively with me in the future. If things don't pan out the way I'd like them to, then I'm handing her a bag with everything she's given me over the years and moving on. No friendship, no nothing. I basically agree that since she wanted the break, she should reach out. I would conduct my life as if the relationship was over. Either she will use this break as a means of fading away or ask to meet in order to formally break up. Personally I'd say that if she does want back after 3 weeks, and I'm giving a 25% chance of that happening, you should tell her that you need another month or so. This is not to be a prick, but to give yourself the time to turn the efforts that you've made at improving yourself really take hold and turn into these positive habits. It will also give you a lot more perspective regarding your relationship and why you fell into some of your negative behaviors. Good luck. Just because she wanted a break doesn't make you a loser. It's easy to take this rejection personally, but the fact is, people change and grow a lot in their late teens to mid-twenties. Just try talking to her about what changed so you can learn from it and move on if that's what you want. You need to ask yourself why she asked for a three-week break from you and be with you again forever. It's quite obvious, don't you think? You were together since she was a teenager, and she never really got to experience what being with other guys is like. This is basically her one and only chance to sow her wild oats and get pounded by guys. Whereas she would have taken her time had you settled with being good friends, the three-week deadline probably means that she'll want to get with as many guys as she can. You need to face the fact that this is already happening. And as much as it hurts, you will have to find a way to move on. 
even if you do decide to forgive her and even marry her, what chance do you think you'll have at a happy marriage? You will likely grow to resent her for what she's doing now. It's pretty selfish of her to string you along during this time. If she had any respect for you, and the eight years you had together, she should have forced a complete break from the relationship. My advice to you is to take some serious time away from this relationship. Experience the world for yourself. If you do improve, do it for you and not in hopes of getting her back. She's already gone. You should go too. There's so much still to see and so much that will actually change you to be experienced. Maybe eventually changing into the person she wishes you were or into the person you ought to be. Update, so, my one remaining week ended, as they do. I finished it off with a weekend trip out of town to visit family, run a 10,000. It helped a lot, but the agony of uncertainty still hung over me like a personal cloud. When will she text me? What if she doesn't? Am I really ready to talk to her? And a thousand other questions. She ended up wasting no time and texted me on the morning of the first workday of the week. Along the lines of hi, hope you had a great weekend. Want to meet on Saturday? That smiley face at the end. And the promptness, it got me damn excited. But I quickly realized that the positivity of this text meant one of two things. One, she was all pumped about getting back together. Unlikely. Two, she was excited for this new chapter of friendship in our lives. More than likely, I texted back a time and place and she agreed, with the same suspicious enthusiasm. Well, I was certainly a sap while we were dating, but I'd educated myself enough in the last few weeks to know that being friends with your ex does not lead to good things unless you are both well and truly over each other, particularly not for the dumpy. So my game plan for the conversation became no to friendship, qualified yes to dating again. I thought about various avenues of conversation that could come up but tried to simply formulate my thoughts rather than come up with specific things to say. I'm prone to stop listening if I feel like I have a witticism to insert. The time came. I got myself looking sharp. New clothes, well-groomed, confidence on my mind from a workout beforehand. We met, and seeing her smile lifted the weight of despair right off my chest. She said it was great to see me again. The elation didn't last too long, of course. We talked casually about things we'd done in the last three weeks, and the knowledge that I'd been purposefully excluded from what she'd been up to brought the hurt right back. All of a sudden she was into EDM, my favorite genre, and was making plans to go to concerts and festivals, when all she'd wanted to do before was drag me to ballets and concertos. I remained stoic, no pathetic weeping this time. The first thing she did when we sat down to start talking about next steps was to ask me what I thought. I may have done the wrong thing here by diving right into the past, asking her when she had started thinking of breaking up and whether she had tried telling me directly what was wrong. I had felt it was necessary to ask those questions to address the communication gap between us, but she was already on the verge of tears by the time she explained to me that it had been a few months, that she'd been waiting for the time when I had myself most together, and that it was just the way she did things to make up her mind on things and act on them. Okay, well then she turned to me and said again she'd been talking for a while so what do you think? And even though I had been planning to pursue her on this point of better communication and let her approach the make or break, my emotions and my needs started effing me good at this point. I responded with something like I want to try again to make this work. I feel like I saw something click in her head at that moment. She turned away. I don't remember everything that was said as our conversation lasted over an hour. But what unraveled was that she hadn't fundamentally changed her mind during the break, apart from realizing that we were very compatible. She didn't want to keep our old relationship even so. I told her that our old relationship was dead, but that we could start a new one, that I'd worked on myself and that I lived a healthier life now. She said she was so proud and happy I'd done that for myself, but that she didn't want a new relationship either. I sensed the friendship trap closing and told her outright we couldn't be friends. That made her freeze in her tracks. You have a binary choice to make. I told her to be with me completely or without me completely. And she responded through tears that she'd rather be without me. Well then, as the dust settled, she gave me a handwritten excerpt from a poem indicating that our relationship was stronger for the adversity we'd gone through. This threw me off, and when I parted from her shortly after, striding away without looking back, it gnawed upon my mind. Did she come into this expecting me to whisk her off her feet, to tell her I'd never let her go like that again and treasure her forever? I knew that chasing her went against what I'd learned, but I also felt like I didn't have much to lose at this point, and that if I didn't chase her I could regret terribly not knowing what would have happened. So I called her, asked her where she was, and ran to meet her again. Those movie romances man. They f with you. I found her and grasped her and told her I loved her and tried to kiss her, yes, please cringe, 
and as you would expect she wasn't all, oh I hadn't realized how much you loved me, now I love you again. She was more like okay, so I have to explain myself all over again to you. It was good though, because this time she made it very clear what she was thinking. Not in a cruel way, but in a way that I could understand. She said repeatedly that she wasn't ready for a new relationship right now, with anyone. She reiterated that she would rather risk me never talking to her again for the rest of our lives than to start a new relationship with me when she wasn't 100% ready. And despite my protest she said she would leave it to me when I wanted to see her again. I said of chasing her down, this was a mistake. She said no, I really appreciate it. Yes, present me interjects. That ego boost from knowing for sure you're still the one in control is nice, isn't it? She was really torn up though, I have never ever seen her that unhappy. We parted ways again, and this time we really parted. I do see now that I was only partially ready for the conversation. I'd improved my lifestyle, but I was still too driven by my fear of being alone. Still, even as mediocre as I performed, I think it was better to get some finality from it than to postpone the thing or to not meet at all. And I don't even much regret chasing her, because it helped me really clarify what she thought, helping me to realize that she'd stopped loving me romantically before we'd even broken up, despite still loving me platonically. As I thought about it more the last few days, I came to realize that I've been blinded by the superficial qualities of this woman. She has so many it would have been impossible not to be if she hadn't forced me away. She's attractive enough to have been approached on the street for modeling gigs. She's heiress level wealthy. She's very articulate and on her way to becoming a world class scholar. And the sex was effing amazing, back when she was willing to do it. She could tie a knot with a cherry stem in her mouth, and she wasn't a fan of protections. She spoiled me for so long planned vacations for us to the Midwest, to the Caribbean, to East Asia, wrote me long love letters while we were long distance, got all my friends together for a surprise birthday celebration when she didn't even know most of them. I reciprocated about 10% tops. I'd never known anything else and I had no foresight, so I took this all for granted. But oh, there were cons. She has class but is terrible at establishing rapport. I'd introduce her to my friends and she'd clam right up, mute and distant as the Statue of Liberty. As a result I felt obligated to abandon my independent social life to spend time with her and her friends, which wasn't healthy as I'm finding now rather acutely. She hid our relationship from her dysfunctional family for the whole 8 effing years because we have such a good thing going. I don't want to get them involved. I always felt like I never knew an important part of her because of that, as well as the fact that she's Christian and I'm not. But most of all, I'm realizing that our relationship was inherently unequal. At one point around year 4, when the cracks in our relationship were starting to show, I asked her why she loved me. She responded simply with the children's book Corduroy in which a lovingly naive teddy bear is purchased and sewn up by a little girl. If only I had also been handed the cautionary tale of what happens to Corduroy when the girl grows up. Even if she didn't consciously intend to, I feel like my ex used me as an emotional crutch to get through college. She admitted she started planning the breakup right after her master's graduation, plying me with gifts to keep me around until the time arose to find actual marriage material. And so, while I struggle a bit to keep my head afloat in a sea of regrets about how I could have fixed the relationship, feeling like I was so close to reigniting the spark, seeing myriad friends get married, who've know each other much shorter than my ex and I, among those regrets is that I didn't break up with her myself sooner. I was so frightened of losing the best thing in my life that I refused to ever examine what it was doing to me objectively. If I had I might have realized that I was being sucked into a one-way dependency which could only end badly, one way or another. Even with all this said, I have to wonder if it's possible for us to get back together as a couple someday, on new and different terms. The problems while we were dating may have been fixable with proper communication, and the primary reason she gave me for not trying again was that she wasn't ready for a relationship. Or maybe the cracks run too deep and our shared history is now too much of a hindrance to ever permit us to succeed together. It's probably too soon to say. During the hard days I keep myself going knowing that the only way to get her back is ironically to get over her. During the good days though, well, everything is possible. Right now I plan to first work on getting my life back in order. After a month, my apartment is still a disaster. And secondly to try to be around people who have theirs together already. To organize myself fun things to do with friends even though planning stresses the hell out of me. To work on developing my career into what I want it to be rather than what I happen to fall into. And once I'm confident with the life I lead, to get back into the dating world and see what other women are like. Once I get particularly confident, perhaps I can test the waters with my ex again. 
but I'm not making any plans now to do so, and I'm not contacting her or responding to her with more than a polite, curt response if she contacts me. Until I reach that point, I welcome your thoughts, even those telling me what a dope I am. I do have one specific to ask advice about. She pleaded me not to return the things she's given me over the years, because I want us to be able to look back when we're old and see how much we loved each other. But it's a effing large bag of stuff I've got, and I don't know if I'll ever want to look at it again if current circumstances prevail. Even though an extreme amount of love and care went into its contents, should I return it to her anyway? Destroy it. Shove it in the furthest recesses of my apartment. I don't care so much about what she wants, but I'm not sure what's best for me. If you were to ever have a chance getting back with her in the future, and you don't, it would be through you being effing awesome, and completely different than the romantic fool you proved yourself to be during the endgame. Here is the sad truth, it would be nice if your SO would stop and tell you as soon as she senses her attraction to you weakening. That is crazy rare. Much more frequently is the relationship on her side dying a slow death, and when she finally doesn't give a F about you anymore, then is when she'll have the courage to tell you it's over, because then she won't care how you react to it. For the wise man, there are clues this is happening. The most obvious being a decrease in lovemaking. That was your red alert. I'm sure you've learned a lot from this. Never do what you see in the romantic comedies. Focus on getting your crap together, try to enjoy being single for a while. You're definitely on the right track, and will be better than ever in no time. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you really like my videos then don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Have a good day.